The CompTIA Security Plus exam is a comprehensive certification that covers a wide range of topics ranging from social engineering, cryptography, even risk management. And so it's a really good starting point for somebody who's looking to get into cybersecurity. And despite what you may have read online about it being a very easy certification, I just would like to let you know that that was not my experience. I didn't just think this was something that I could wrap up in a week. I know that's some people's experience with it and whatever good for them. But my experience was that I had to put a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of study hours into this certification. And I am just so happy that this milestone is complete in my journey. And I'm very excited to share with you some of the things that I learned along the way. So the first part that I want to share with you is some of the study materials that I used. I used quite a few. I really felt like I wanted to diversify my learnings for this certification. So here's the list actually of everything that I used. And I want to go through each of these one by one with you and just kind of just share my point of view on each one. So the very first thing that I did when I started studying for this certification was use CertMaster Learn. This was included in my W. WGU course materials. So if you're also a W student, you can just use this as well. My opinion on this is that it was really good. It just was very time consuming to get through everything. I felt like some of the lessons could have been shorter. Yeah, that's just my personal opinion on CertMaster. I did really like it though. I felt like it was definitely beneficial to go through everything. The PBQs on there were pretty good, and then also it had a lot of practice tests. My personal opinion, though, is that it just takes a lot of time to get through it. If you're looking to learn everything as fast as possible, maybe Cert Master Learn isn't the right one for you. Maybe something else that I recommend is going to be a better fit. The next thing that I used, I actually very much loved. I 10 out of a 10 recommend this, and that's the Daryl Gibson Security Study Guide. This is a book that I purchased on Amazon, and he just has a really nice way of making things easy to understand by how he words things. He even will explain stuff with like stories or attach it to like some type of example that really helps you visualize the concept and really help you wrap your head around what he's teaching you. He also has these checkpoints throughout his book where he'll say like, remember this. And I remember like the night before I took the test, I went through the book again and I only was looking at all of the remember this checkpoints. And because I felt like he knows what's going to stand out on the test and what you really need to know. And so I just found that really helpful because it really just like throws out to you like what you really want to make sure that you know and understand. Another aspect about his book that is really good is that it has two practice tests inside. So not only are you getting the whole study guide, you're getting two practice tests that you can use to kind of mimic your experience taking the actual exam. They're not a full 90 questions. I think they were about 75 questions each, but they're still really good. And he does a really good job of wording things in a way that keep you on your toes. I'll give you an example. He had one question that it was saying, you open up your computer and you're locked out and on the screen it says, you owe us $2,500 before we'll give you any of your access back. And initially, you would just want to jump to, okay, this is, the answer is ransomware. Because you think that that's what the question's going to ask you. But instead of asking you, what type of malware is this? It actually would ask you, who is the attacker behind this? And the answer would have been a criminal syndicate, not necessarily ransomware. Because that's not, it wasn't asking you what type of malware it is. It was asking you who the attacker was. So it was him that really taught me that principle of like really just pay attention to what the question's asking you because he has a few of those in his study guides and I found that really helpful. Okay, the next thing that I used and really liked was Jason Dion's practice tests. His weren't exactly how you're gonna see it on the real exam because his are a lot more storytelling. I felt like what I really liked about his tests is they helped me just gauge my understanding of the concepts because he's not gonna ask you a question just based off of the definition, which is kind of what you'll see on a lot of other questions. Like for instance, his are more storytelling. 
And in, I feel like in storytelling questions, it really shows whether or not you really understand what you're looking for because you're not just going based off of, you know, your keywords and your memorized definition of what something means. You're going off of the actual practical use of that term or concept. I feel like his really help you gauge where you're at in your learning. He recommends scoring about 90% and that will kind of tell you that you're ready. I don't see it very often that people are scoring very, very high, like on the first go. It's very common to get like in the 60s, 70s. So definitely go through it a couple times. And, you know, once you hit that 90%, it's a really good indicator that you're on a good track. Another thing that I really liked is the exam compass practice test. So this is just like a free based website that you can go on to, it's just examcompass.com. And the thing that I really liked about this website is that you can do your practice test based off of the topic. So like for instance, if you feel like you're kind of weak in the area of like social engineering, you can do a practice test that is based off of social engineering. And you know, it's just like a really good way to kind of drill down on one topic. Okay, the next resource that I used is the Professor Maser practice test. This is by far my favorite practice test. I feel like this is the closest you're gonna get as far as what you'll see on the actual exam. The way that he like stylized his questions just really kind of fit what you'll see on Security Plus. His baby cues are actually really, really good as well. And then at the end of the study guide, when you're going through your answers, the way that he like describes all the answers is just so clear as day. And I just felt like his tests were really good. I actually purchased his like a week before I was gonna test. It was kind of just like a last minute throw in on my studying. And I'm so glad that I did because his just, I felt like we're just a really, really good solid practice test. They also were a full 90 questions. So if you really wanna to try to mimic the actual exam situation, this is a really good place to get that experience because you'll get the full 90 questions. The questions are very similar. So yeah, definitely check out those. And then the next one is Dojo Lab for the PBQs. So Dojo Lab was something that I actually bought the lifetime access back when I was studying A+, just cause I knew I was gonna be in the certification game for a while. And so, yeah, the PBQs, I like that it's like on an online experience. It's not necessarily like on paper. And I just like that, you know, it also works inside the command line. And it just has like the drag and drop kind of similarly to what you'll see on the exam. So, yeah, I really like their labs. They're not super... They're not super technical or super in, in depth, I would say, but they're just, you know, they're just good drills. They're just good like PBQ drills. So just another thing that I have that I really like using. And then the last resource that I used to prepare for the Security Plus was the CompTIA app. So there were a few different apps that I was kind of like bouncing back and forth with, but I just kind of kept going back to this one. I just really like the interface, the design. And I like how it has an aspect where you can do like a one-off question, like a question of the day. And then also it has a feature on there where you can just do like 10 questions. I use this like all the time. Like I would, if I was like sitting in a waiting room or just like maybe driving passenger or something, just maybe like before bed or something, I would just do these like 10 off questions just like really quickly. And I felt like I honestly like never got the same ones. So they have a very huge pool of questions on their app and it was just very good. And it has like a explanation of all the ones that you got wrong. So you're not just kind of like left in the dark of like as to why. It's also a very good resource. I would definitely get that app as well. Okay, so in this section, I want to explain like if I were to do this all over again, completely start over from scratch studying, which resources I would use. So here's what I would do. If I was starting all over, the I would definitely get the Daryl Gibson book. I felt like it was just a really clean cut way to understand everything without getting too noisy. He kind of just stays within the lines, which is cool. I would get that book. I would also get the Professor Maser practice tests so that I could mimic the actual exam experience. I would actually watch Professor Maser's course on YouTube. I did not do that, but I would do that just to kind of put a visual to my learning. And then I would also get the CompTIA app. I think when I subscribed to it, it was like $4.99 a month. So if you plan to study for like three or four months, all in all, the study prep would be like $100. I think it's very worth it. 
So that's the plan then the approach that I would take if I were to do all over again. In this section, I wanna give you my best study tip and strategy for studying for this. Okay, so the number one thing that I would do is just pick the day that you want to take the exam. Maybe don't book it, you know, you can if you're, you know, wanna be bold, go ahead and book it. But if not, just set like an invisible deadline. That's cool too. And then that will just help you to like stay motivated. And then it'll also help you to kind of like set your in-between mile markers of like where you wanna be in your studying. A really easy way to do it is just to just break it up by the domains. I think the test has like five do different domains. And so you could just do maybe like, you know, one domain every couple weeks. So that's the first thing I would do is pick your test date. The next thing that I would do is go through all the material before practice testing. I know that a lot of people don't do it this way and they don't suggest it. If you're brand new in cybersecurity and you're brand new even in like IT, I would definitely just go through all the material. It's really like not a ton of material. Like you can get through the whole book definitely within a month if you really just sit down and do it. That way I feel like you're not gonna have a bunch of gaps. I feel like the most annoying thing ever is doing practice tests and just feeling like you have so many gaps. And so the first thing I would do is just go through all the material. Once that's done, at that point, I would then start to go really hard on my practice tests. Do like one full one a day, maybe two a day, depending on you know how much time you have. And then once you do your practice test, then you can start to see where your weak areas are. When, you're, when you have your weak areas, then you can just go back and refine on those in your learning. And I feel like it's not gonna be that hard to iron out your weak areas because you're going over the concepts now for the second time, not the first time. Okay, so that's what I would do. And that's kind of the method that I used going into this as well. I also wanna put this in this video, my personal study timeline of how long it took me, just because I know I'm gonna get asked this a whole bunch. I studied off and on for well over a year, so I definitely took longer than I should have. But like accumulatively of all the time that I was studying, it was about four months if I were to just like pack it down into actual study time. Yeah, it life happened, things kind of got in the way. I thought I was getting ready to test and then something would come up and it would kind of deter me. But yeah, accumulatively, I would say it was about four months. And, but once I finally did schedule it, I gave myself 10 days. So I had already gone through all the material twice actually in, in that time frame of kind of stopping and starting my studying. So I had already gone through everything twice, so nothing was brand new. I just had to like really review everything really hard. So when I felt like it was time for me to just get this done, I booked the test and I gave myself 10 days. And I just went really hard on practice tests. I reviewed like crazy. I went through all the topics that I felt like I was weak on. And then I took my test and I actually failed the first time, which I talked about that in my previous video. But yeah, I, I like barely failed though. So I got to 724. So I didn't really want to wait too long before testing again because I felt like I was like right there. I didn't want to like set myself back too much by taking too long. And so I scheduled the next exam for two weeks out and I gave myself two weeks and I just grinded, grinded every day, practice tests, going through all of them all over again, refining, all my test scores were going up by like 10 or 15 points on the first go. And so I knew I was in a better spot than before. I was feeling really good. And so I went in for my second exam and I passed it. And that one, yeah, did really good on the second try. So yeah, that's my experience taking it. Just remember, like if you don't get it the first time, you can always retake it again. I know these tests are not cheap, but the way that it helps you in your job hunt and all that stuff, especially if you're gonna work in the gov government sector, this exam satisfies one of the DOD requirements. I think it's like DOD, a DOD level two, something, 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 I can't remember. I'll throw it up here since I can't remember, but yeah, it's a really good certification to have. And so it's definitely worth, you know, just sitting down, getting done, doing your absolute best on. And if you don't get it, don't wait a ton of time before taking it again is my best suggestion, especially if you miss it by like a few points. 
don't wait too long, like just get back in there and try again. So passing the Security Plus exam, it was definitely a challenging experience, but extremely rewarding. This is just the first of many and I'm excited to keep going on the next one. And just to give you guys like a little teaser of what I'm working on. So basically I got like a huge boost of confidence after finishing up the Security Plus. It really just reminded me and showed me that I can do this. And if I just set my mind to this, you know, that I can, jump over the next hurdle and the next hurdle. At the beginning of my cybersecurity journey, I kind of wrote off the opportunity for myself of being a penetration tester. I always thought the idea of ethical hacking just sounded absolutely amazing, but I just felt like I could never do it because there would be like there would be just so much information to have to learn, and I just felt like, oh, it's too late for me. I should just go into something like GRC. But to be honest, like the past couple of weeks, I've had a complete change of heart, and I'm currently inside of the Hack the Box penetration tester track, really loving it. You know, I finally, for the first time after like, two and a half years of studying cybersecurity, I'm opening up my first virtual box and, you know, practicing ethical hacking. So that's what I'm currently working on. So you can definitely expect to hear more about that from me. I have a personal goal to get my OSCP by next year. Like sometime in next year is like my personal goal. So yeah, it's just very exciting. So I just like want to remind you that you know, when I first started cybersecurity, even just the, the concept of the CIA triad was daunting to me. I just, I didn't get it for like, authorization and authentication sounded like the same word. There are so many things that I was, just wasn't clicking for me right away, but you know, little by little, I kept pushing, I kept going at it. And yeah, obviously those things are very easy now to understand. And so just keep going, definitely just enjoy the process. A year from now, I promise you, like, you are going to be in a much bigger place, a much better place in your learning as long as you just keep applying yourself, pushing yourself towards that next goal. Just keep setting those invisible mile markers and put your blinders on. Keep going. I'll be here rooting you on on your journey as well. So, yeah, if you found this video helpful, definitely give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more future videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.